But we begin tonight with one of the side effects of news houndiitis. When you follow politics in the news closely, uh, when you get more Google alert emails than you do spam notices about the benefits of little blue pills, when you spend all day reading this time of year about the elections, you have days when things in the news rub you the wrong way. Like this. You know, Randy Moss no longer knows how to catch a football. But winning games anyway now as a motivational speaker, really? Randy Moss, really? Come on, that's impossible. See, that's an example of just disbelieving something that you read in the news, of just thinking it doesn't comport with your understanding of reality. There are also times when you don't necessarily disagree with the news, but it seems like whoever's writing the headlines, whoever's writing the leads, is just missing the point. There was this headline in Politico today, Obama's white working class problem. Uh, At the New York Times yesterday, the headline was, Democrats' grip on the South continues to slip. That was the headline yesterday in the New York Times. The article saying, quote, saying that the Democratic Party, quote, is facing a situation where its only safe presence in the South is in urban and predominantly black districts. So this is this spin cycle's political diagnosis of what's going on in the elections. President Obama has a white voter problem. That's what we're hearing now. White people just aren't voting for Democrats like they used to. And that is one way to tell that story. But, you know, if you just turn the telescope around the other way, looking at the same thing, but just turn the telescope the other way, the other way to tell this story, the flip side of Democrats are losing the white vote is, boy, oh, boy, Republicans sure are locking up the white vote this year. The Republican Party is sure securing, in particular, that white working class vote. Last night on this show, we talked about what we think of as the Southern Strategy 2.0, the apparent calculation that it mathematically and strategically makes sense to really overtly offend minorities, uh, to turn the minority vote against you almost deliberately. Because if by doing that, um, you may lose that smaller number of votes from minority voters, but you may also lock up solidly a larger number of white voters. Uh, And so you get candidates who send around really, really, really racist jokes and videos, right, Carl Palladino? Or you get candidates who run virulently anti-Latino ads that look like Jesse Helms wrote them. And then that same candidate makes a comment like this to Latino high school students. I don't know that all of you are Latino. Some of you look a little more Asian to me. The inimitable Sharon Engel speaking this week at a Nevada high school uh, to that school's Hispanic Students Association. The only way the math makes sense for a strategy like this, though, is if you take out, um, I guess you think of it as downside insurance. You have to be sure that in locking up the white vote, which is the thing you're trying for, particularly in locking up the white scared vote, you have to sort of protect your downside. You have to make sure that you don't accidentally turn out too many voters on the other side to vote against you, too many more voters who are out to vote against you, in part because of the way that you are campaigning. How do you do that? To answer that question this year, I would like to introduce you to Sharon Maroney. You have probably never seen her before, nor have you ever heard of her, but uh, here is why, at least this year, she should probably be famous. Sharon Maroney helped put together a petition uh, demanding that President Obama resign from office uh, for unnamed high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, She claimed in this court filing that President Obama is not a citizen and therefore secretly not really the president. Quote, is Mr. Obama a natural born citizen? The truth is he subjectively self-certified to be legally qualified. He is the only one with proof of his affirmation and he has refused to enter that proof into the public record. As Brother Jones reports this week, Sharon Maroney uh, is going to be choosing who will serve as poll workers for the great state of Illinois. Poll watchers, part of a conservative stop voter fraud crusade in the state of Illinois. An initiative is dispatching people to oversee the polls on election day. And the birther lady, Sharon Maroney, is one of the people who, for that initiative, will be choosing who gets dispatched to watch the polls. Asked by Mother Jones for a comment about her role in this year's elections in Illinois, Ms. Maroney referred all questions to the executive director of the Illinois Republican State Committee. Think about that as a second, just for a second, right? It, it, it's not just the birthers taking it upon themselves to police the polls this year. It's the birthers working with a major political party and referring all questions about their role as birther poll watchers to the Republicans. 
Last week, the Illinois Republican running for President Obama's old Senate seat, Mark Kirk, was caught on tape discussing his campaign's plans for Election Day. He said that he will be dis- deploying people to very specific districts in Chicago, districts with uh, large minority populations, to, you know, watch over things. These are lawyers and other people that will be deployed in key vulnerable precincts. For example, south and west side of Chicago, uh, Rockford, uh, Metro East, uh, where the other side might be tempted to jigger the, uh, the, the numbers somewhat. Democratic Senate candidate Alexei Janulius, who is running against Mark Kirk, took Mr. Kirk to task for that at a debate last night. I think it's clear here what happened. He got Congressman Kirk got caught on tape saying that he wants to put, quote, voter integrity programs in what areas? On the south side, on the west side of Chicago, parts of Rockford, that in areas of East St. Louis, then he calls in the same goons and thugs who are responsible uh, for what took place in Florida in 2000. There's no voter integrity, and I'll tell you why his comments aren't true. Because there's never been an accusation of fraud on the west and south side of Chicago. Congressman, at a time when we should be encouraging people to vote, you're trying to suppress the African-American vote, and that's unacceptable. It's dangerous. If this sounds familiar, it's because this is not a new tactic. This is not novel. This is how it's done. This is how you ensure minimizing votes for the other guy, right? This is the downside insurance if you are going to pursue a strategy that tries to lock up as many white votes as you can and sort of expenses out minority votes. You don't have to wait until Election Day to see tactics like this in action. Early voting has already begun in states across the country, including Texas, where there are also early reports of voter intimidation in minority neighborhoods, particularly in and around Houston, where about 25 percent of residents are African-American. The county attorney says it's received numerous complaints about overzealous poll watchers at several heavily minority early voting locations, including here at Kashmir Gardens, where a poll watcher told us he was recruited by True the Vote, an organization that proclaims rooting out voter fraud as its main goal. Houston is in Harris County. That is where a Tea Party group calling itself the King Street Patriots launched this anti-voter fraud project that they call True the Vote. Uh, This project involves sending people to the polls to watch people in districts that happen to be mostly minority districts um, to watch people casting their ballots there. The True the Vote King Street Patriots, who are organizing these election watchers, uh, put together a video about supposed election fraud. It originally contained a doctored picture of an African-American voter holding a sign that said, I only got to vote once. The sign that they took that from originally said, don't mess with our vote. They remade it to say, I only got to vote once. Um, Up in Wisconsin, uh, we've also found that 75 billboards have popped up from Madison to Milwaukee. Big voter, big billboards that warn voter fraud is a felony. We voted illegally. We being the people standing there behind bars. In Minnesota, a coalition of Tea Party group and other conservative groups will lead voter surveillance teams at polling places on Election Day. This isn't new. This is how it's done. Joining us now is Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for The Washington Post and, of course, an MSNBC contributor, also the author of the new book, Disintegration, The Splintering of Black America. Mr. Robinson, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here, Rachel. Um, I feel like uh, this happens to a greater or lesser degree in every election that voter, at least Mm -hmm. recently, that you see voter suppression efforts targeting minority districts. Do you feel like we are seeing anything fresh and new about it this year? Or is this the same old thing? No, this is this is the same old thing, basically. And the only thing that might be fresh and new is the uh, uh, the, some of the people who are behind it uh, call themselves Tea Party activists. The, that designation is is new, but the fact of attempts at voter suppression is not new at all. In fact, it's been a tenet of uh, Republican Party strategy uh, for a long, long time, and also an element of right wing mythology. I mean, they're, they're just judging from my email, there are there are there are some people out on the right wing who actually believe that there are some sort of sinister left wing organizations out there plotting day and night to commit. To to voter fraud, uh, and you know, despite the evidence that 
there is no evidence, that, that there are no cases, that, there are, that, that it doesn't happen. Uh, and nonetheless, you know, mythology, I guess, doesn't have to have evidence to go with it. Well, the, it's interesting to see the way that the mythology, um, I guess, d- plays out. Um, Mm -hmm. This group, this True the Vote group um, in Texas, uh, they have maintained that the headquarters of a get out the vote effort in Houston uh, is also secretly the headquarters of the new Black Panther Party, which, of course, has as its (laughs) has as its goals, the extermination of all white people through voter fraud by two guys who braid their beard hair. I mean, uh, but it's it's such an obscure it's such an obscure piece of mythology that it's very easily traceable. I mean, that's a Fox News meme that has been pushed there exclusively, really, Mm -hmm. um, for a year. Is is it worth fighting back against those things, or do you you just assume that everybody who watches watches Fox is going to believe that stuff? No, I I think you fight back against it. I mean, take the example of the, uh, quote, New Black Panther Party, end quote, and I put it in quotes because it's not an organization. It's a few, you know, crazy guys that Fox ran over over and over again, that same um, several second clip of those same two guys at the at the polling place. What is fascinating is is the receptivity that that audience was receptive uh, to that repeated clip and to that uh, mythology of of a, of a new black battle party that, pre- that presents some, some sort of grave danger to the to the nation when nothing of the sort exists. Nobody ever heard of this group, and it's not really much of a group at all. And it, it's uh, it, it, the interesting thing, I think, is that um, it strikes a chord among people who think they are taking over the country, that they, I guess, being minorities and being um, uh, people other than my kind of people. Uh, and uh, I think that's the same spirit that's behind the take our country back signs at the mm. Tea Party rallies and, and, and stuff like that. And, and so if, if they're taking the country by the sinister method of voting, they must be doing it illegitimately, because voting is a good thing, and and, uh, we can't oppose that, so they must be cheating somehow. Gene, one briefly last question. That it seems like the the way to fight voter intimidation is obviously to protect voters from vigilantism and to protect mm-hmm. voters from organized efforts to suppress or intimidate, uh, to, to suppress their vote or intimidate them from mm-hmm. from going to the polling place or from actually casting their vote to make sure that all the votes are cast. That cast. That's the sort of technical way to do it. Mm-hmm. The bigger political way to do it is to do everything you can to promote turnout, particularly mm-hmm. of minority voters. Do you think that Democrats this year are focusing on that with appropriate intensity. Uh, they certainly are right now, and uh, they should have been, uh, you know, a few months ago. But uh, President Obama was in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, uh, gave a speech to a, a mostly black crowd, and for good reason. A big turnout in Philadelphia can can decide the Sestak Toomey race. A big turnout in Chicago can decide the Kirk Genulius race. Uh, so there's a lot at stake here, and if Democrats can increase minority turnout, uh, we can really have some. Support prizes on November 2nd. Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist from the Washington Post, MSNBC contributor, and his new book is Disintegration, the Splintering of Black America. Gene, thank you so much, as always. So great to be here, Rachel. See you soon. Thank you. So I'm not um, super big on online contests. Okay, except the ones where they're giving away Metallica tickets. If I don't cop to that, somebody's going to find me out about it and tease me. So, yes, fine. I love online contests for Metallica tickets. But I don't otherwise love online contests. That said, it turns out that there is an online contest right now that is not for Metallica tickets, but that I'm really into because the prize is getting to interview former President George W. Bush. I am entering that contest. I may need your help. Please stick around for that. And for New York Times columnist Frank Rich, who joins us in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. The Rachel Maddow Show uses Cisco telepresence for face-to-face interviews. 